So I'm going to show you a bit of what Nat had been talking about, specifically the dynamic sets and how they work in the shell. You'll have seen a bunch of this in the keynote when Halal did the demo for Bill, uh, Halal's uh, little talk this morning, which was quite exciting. Um, but I'll spend a little more talking about why and what uh, as we go through it. The first thing is, when we talk about dynamic sets being what users will be dealing with for the most part, we're not really saying, hey, you know, they, they don't ever have folders, or they don't deal with anything else. We're really saying, by default, the machine needs to do the right things to make my data work. It should figure out how I should be able to find it. It should figure out how to categorize it for me. And it should really say, hey, you don't need to figure out where those 50,000 photos go. We'll handle that. That's not a problem you need to worry about. Um, that said, what really becomes important, and surprisingly, we, you know, gotten away with not getting too many questions on it, is how do properties work in that system? Like, how do they actually get surfaced to the user, and what do they mean? There's a couple of things that we've shown you guys. Uh, for example, when I click in this little feature we call the word wheel and type down Longhorn, you'll see it filters down to the 172 documents I've got that are about Longhorn in some fashion. And all it did is said, you know, hey, look at all those properties. Show me the ones that have the word Longhorn in them somewhere. It's pretty simple, right? It, it didn't actually have to go and say, oh, actually, you know, I need to think about this schema, and it's, you know, system.context.core.category. authored by Jason, or what, none of that. Just simple, typed in what I was looking for, and it kind of figured out where that would be. That's not enough, though, right? When you start thinking about, and especially you see uh, a little later in one of the other demos, how I can actually go and specifically choose properties and use those to organize my system, yeah, I really want to be able to sp pick specific things. So I could come up here and say, oh, uh, let's look at all the authors on this list. There's a couple authors here, authors that have written about Longhorn. We can look at Bill's documents on that. He very graciously lent them to us. Um, they're, not, they're not really his documents, in case anyone was wondering. The, uh, it's OK, you can laugh. The, uh, uh, I'll say that again later, too. The, uh, the set of documents we have here, though, are now part of two pieces of the query. They're actually all of the documents by Bill that have something to do with Longhorn. And I can continue to apply these different properties. I could say, you know, actually, let's look at a specific category of those. Um, let's look at his personal documents about Longhorn. Not really sure what those would be, but uh, his mileage log um, and his reimbursement form, they're very handy for Bill drove down to the PDC apparently this week. Um, the point is, I was just using a couple different properties to narrow down to a set of things I found interesting and relevant. It didn't really matter how I got to them. It didn't matter which ones I cared about. I, the computer doesn't care. We don't care. We just build this platform that actually says, hey, you, you choose what you care about. You tell us. And you don't have to decide at the point that you save the file. It, it could be when you're trying to access the file. That gives you some basics of how to find, say, uh, a set of documents at just at the point that I'm looking at them, especially when I know just about one that I want and I've got a good idea about it. But it doesn't give you kind of the context for uh, what is the set of things I have. Uh, when I had that drop down, it kind of showed me, yeah, here's you know, the set of, oop, just Bill here. Um, I'm just looking at Bill here. The, uh, the set of documents that I'm actually caring about that I have some relationship to across these properties. But I, I really want to be able to say things like, actually, show me some structure around those. So I just did stack by. And what it did is say, you know what, take all the, everything that was the project property there and create some structure around it. Take each value, separate it out, and make some object that I can actually manipulate and deal with. And you look at it, I actually have a fair amount of projects here. Um, you know, I'm planning the company picnic for the company. and. Uh, working on flight and program and productivity, all sorts of great things. Uh, but I've got this structure that allows me to actually get some sort of lay of that land. And it's easier to browse around this way, just leveraging that kind of folder stuff. If I go and look at, let's say, Windows Longhorn again here, I'll navigate into that stack. And now I'm looking at all the documents that have that property applied. I didn't have to go pick it from menu. It was a little easier, per se, for most users that way. I could pick another one and say, gosh, you know, here's the point at which I want to stack it by author. Um, I'm probably going to be looking again at all the documents by Oh, no, a couple documents here. Um, this shows me just that set. Once again, it's constrained by the previous one I was looking at. It says all the documents that have Project Windows Longhorn on them, and then these stacks of these, all the different authors that worked on it. I could do interesting things with those stacks, just like I could do with a folder. I could right click and do, I'm sure there's a send to menu on it. And yeah, sure, I could, I could send all the documents in that probably to uh, my floppy disk or to an email. And I could go and say, drag that stack and go put it somewhere else. I can also say, put something into that stack and kind of leverage the fact that because it's got this object representation, I can just drag this item right on top of it. You'll see it all updated. It'll say 51, great document went in. Now I've gone and edited some properties. I didn't have to go in and actually figure out, well, gosh, which part of the schema is it at? And how do I go and surface that up and ma manipulate all those things? I just leveraged all the same kind of concepts I know today with folders. I had that object to, to work with. If I actually go in there and look at the documents by Bill, we should see 
the architecture review notes. And uh, hopefully it'll work and it'll look really good when it does. Um, that's okay, you can laugh at that point as well, but I guess we won't. The, uh, <laughs> it's fine, they're bad jokes, that's the design. The, the set of documents we now see here, of course, once again, further constrained, right? We're looking at all those Windows Longhorn documents that are also by Bill. The interesting thing that starts to surface is you think about, well, okay, great, now I've got this filtering so I can quickly find one of my documents. I've got the stack so I can actually get a pretty good survey and I can navigate through those, have some sort of navigational hierarchy across those. I understand, as Nat said, they're independent, you know, they're organization independent from location. It's actually saying, here's a set of documents you have. It doesn't matter where they're stored, but this is the view you get, the organization you get across them. I can also kind of go and say, well, you know, actually, I, I want to see other things that are kind of similar or related. Right, I could continue to go down further here. I could actually say, you know, uh, let's stack it by date or something. I could stack it by application name. I should get some separate application stacks here. And I could decide, oh, that's, that's the right way to organize these things at this given point. But it might not be. And in fact, maybe what I'm looking for is just a different author. I'm looking at all the documents by Colin Anthony. So I just use the address bar to actually do a lateral navigation across those things. Instead of having to say, oh, you know, now I've got to go back up and change, or I've got to reform my query somehow. No, I just kind of went and chose one, said, oh, yeah, project. That, that's what I did before. Show me all the other projects windows. Uh, and it, it should actually just give me that list. We can say, oh, I'm, I'm looking for all the employee and benefits documents. That gives you a, some understanding of kind of the different ways to go and actually find and organize those things. Uh, you can imagine that other, other ways of actually editing the properties become relevant as I start to look at them. This one edited by Hillel in particular. It's got a category of work on it. I can click on it and add a new one. So I'll just add something, uh, nat rules, great. And what I've actually gone and done is say, oh, add this value to it. And I'll, it'll be surfaced when I actually go and try to organize these things by that property. And the properties kind of regenerate in the system in that sense. They keep adding more value to it. They'll surface in different ways. Uh, when we go back to all documents, uh, assuming uh, all of the code is performant enough, we should be able to find under category here, as soon as it loads up, the nat rules category. See if it actually surfaced up. Um, not quite yet. Um, we'll stack by and see if we get it that way. The, uh, the, the big thing being kind of like, gosh, I need to be able to add stuff to the system and, and have it just show up naturally, just like I do with folders. It, it's not this, you know, go edit the query. It's not this go edit the scheme. It's really kind of the basics of making this stuff work. I could even do things like say, you know, I want a new stack. I'll say, you know, uh, Krem rules. Krem will get up in a minute. Now I've added just another one there, and I didn't even have to put anything in it. I can just drag and drop something in here. And say, yeah, comptroller details for the Nanovac 2000. It's a, it's a real file. Um, we just should, yep, it's gone in there, and we should get a new property on that thing. Uh, the basics, though, of the system that are really important, the kind of key takeaways from it are, A, being able to build the structure around these things and look at them in different ways. You see me through the course of this demo. I've looked at all this data, all 1,000 documents in like five different ways. I've organized it in five different ways. B, the properties are really the heart of the system. Uh, one of the key things to really kind of take away that we've made kind of points in the demos are, how do I use those properties in the best way? And it really gets down to what are the properties that are relevant to each and every user. The ones I'm using here, they're kind of hard to attach to in some ways because, you know, gosh, do I really organize by author? You know, maybe I organize by project. I probably organize by something specific to whatever I do. But being able to have those in the system added by you guys and others is really critical for have, helping users actually find the ways they're going to want to organize and manipulate all those documents. Um, and finally, a key thing that we're thinking about in terms of the user experience is how and when do those things surface up. So I've showed you filtering, I've showed you stacking, the drag-drop interaction, uh, edited a property up here in the preview pane when I selected a document. Um, there, there's a series of other things like that that I can do, but it becomes also interesting to think about how applications fit into that. Where do applications edit and change those properties? At what point do those things actually start to you know, rehydrate the system in a way that will cause documents to show up in new and interesting ways? That's basically it. Okay. Yeah. Great. Thanks. Thank you, Jason. No Log you out. Okay. I'm gonna. Oops, let me switch back to the slides here. Um,